Bart, we're here with Bart Lucing. Tell me, give me kind of the overview of what your company is all about and what you're trying to do in the solar industry. Okay. Uh, Renew Sol is originally from Germany. We're part of the Central Solar Group, a publicly traded company, very active in our industry, uh, manufacturing panels and also glass for other panel manufacturers. We're the uh, mounting systems division, if you will. Um, have been expanding uh, in Europe since early 2000s. Uh, and two years ago decided that we wanted to expand in the United States and looked at the successes in Europe, took those product concepts and then went into the S, hired an engineering team, uh, hired uh, you know, wind tunnel analysis uh, companies as well and we re-engineered our European products to make them fit for the US market specifically. So we, uh, you know, as you know, we have tornadoes, hurricanes, seismic issues here that they don't have in Europe. So we had to incorporate all those things in our designs and our engineering. And, um, you know, we did that successfully and we launched um, in July last year, 2011. Are your uh, mounting systems, do you primarily focus on the mounting system, mm -hmm. are they, uh, do they cross all the different sectors of solar in terms of rooftop, from rooftop to commercial to utility grade, or what, what sectors we, do you um, focus on? Our, our focus is on rooftop application, uh, pitched or flat, uh, whereas pitched, we, our systems can be applied to residential, but our, what we have seen is more commercial, um, you know, warehouse type buildings, uh, and flat roof applications. Our flat roof product, however, is also being used sometimes on landfills where no penetrations can be used. And since it is sort of a nice sort of tub shape, sits on, on the ground there, they fill it with dirt or ballast um, to uh, keep it in place. So it is used in that application, though it's not designed for that. So our uh, focus is on roof. I gotta be honest, I guess I'd never seen that as an idea of, of the landfill, but here you have land that, you know, a lot of times they, nobody wants to do anything on mm -hmm. it. It's set aside, it's capped, it's yep. garbage dumps, it's capped. Correct. But yet it, it's perfectly suitable for this application. Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tell me about, uh, a lot of the talk is about the efficiencies of the business. You know, the, the prices mm -hmm. of panels are dropping dramatically. Uh, R&D in terms of the panels themselves and the efficiency mm -hmm. of the, and getting more out of the panels. Price of, per watt is dropping. How does your product fit into that sort of that efficiency of, of the development of the market right now? When we looked at the European product and then bringing it here, we didn't just look at the product itself and the cost of the product. We looked at the entire value chain. We looked at, you know, from the engineering, starting with engineering, project engineering, uh, where traditional racking type systems, you know, you're, you're designing a 10, 12, 20 panel rack. You have splices, you have clamps, you have other, you know, components. And as soon as something changes, all of a sudden your splices are in the way of your clamps and you got to redo the whole thing. Um, if the panel height changes because you got a better deal on a cheaper panel, your clamps that you ordered are no longer suitable and you got to wait for the new ones to come in. So we took that into account from engineering. Our product is a one, one unit per one panel. So from a budgeting standpoint, as soon as a customer knows we can fit this many panels on a roof, they know how many of our product they need. Um, our pricing is based on size, not project, but customer. Um, so they know I've got this price for the product, I need this many pieces, budget is done, they can issue their, their quotes. No waiting two, three weeks for design layouts and any of that stuff. Then we looked at the engineering when we actually get to layouts. We do all of that for our customers and we have a turnaround time typically of less than five working days. Because it's so easy to engineer with. The biggest component in our engineering is really the wind tunnel analysis and how that translates to the ballast plant. Uh, we put a lot of effort in that, and that's also what, what takes the most time, but it's also the, the most accurate in the industry today. So that, that plays right into this efficiency. If you've got less design time, mm -hmm. more effect, effective and efficient yep. decision making by the customer Correct. and by the engineering team, that also helps in the cost structuring of the whole project. Correct. And then when they make the decision to use our product, we can ship up to 2,040 units in a truck. Um, depending on panel size, half a megawatt or more. Uh, it gets delivered in kits of 60 or 10, but let's use the 60 kit as the example. When it then needs to be brought to the roof, it's already packaged. So hoist, one hoist, it's there. 
um, it can get staged on the roof where it's needed instead of a central staging location where then there's extra labor involved to distribute it, you know, to either cut rails or sort rails or uh, open the boxes with the end clamps and the mid clamps and start separating every file. Our 60 kit has everything in it that's needed. So it can be staged on the roof where it's needed. You open the box and you can start doing the layout. It's, ve it's very effective, very efficient. Um, the shape is already there. You don't need to build a tilt structure of 15 degrees where you have nuts and bolts and washers and fasteners to build something. Um, so, you know, it's there, you connect them, you attach your panel, you connect the grounding. The system is non-conductive, so it's only the panel that needs to be grounded. It, it's, it's extremely fast and very cost-effective and efficient. And that efficiency only gets bigger as the project gets bigger, instead of getting more complicated with traditional wrecking systems. Tell me about the materials, and if, if the materials are not conductive, what are you using? Uh, we use a high molecular weight polyethylene, which is a material that has been used and proven since the 1950s. It's commonly used in overground piping applications, uh, truck bed liners, pallets, uh, very abrasive outdoor applications. And um, we ensure that it's UV stable by adding 2.5% uh, carbon to the mix when we make it, which gives it perfect outdoor suitability. So you talked about you came from Europe. Europe has been embracing solar development quite a bit. There's mm -hmm. been some generous subsidies from different governments that Correct. helped drive that, obviously, but, but it's been growing greatly. Mm -hmm. Germany's a good example, I think. Correct. Um, what do you think, uh, obviously, you've invested in coming to, to America. What are, <laughs> what are your, uh, how bullish are you on the, on the development of solar in America? I, we see it as a very big market opportunity, and we're, you know, we're proud to be part of that. Uh, all our products are made in America, so we, we really wanted to make that statement too. Um, we, we're a little concerned about how government is interfering. Obviously, the, the, the feed-in tariff issue is coming up. Um, you know, I understand when laws are broken, they need to be you know, corrected, and, and uh, there needs to be an action because of it. I just hope that politics don't get into the way of bringing solar to the masses. Uh, I think if, if whatever measures are being put in are within reason, I think that's that's a good driver to bring more solar to our country or renewable energy, in, you know, altogether. Uh, in particular, in Georgia, um, you know, we've got a lot of solar energy coming from uh, the sun, much more than Germany, and you know, uh, it's sometimes frustrating to see how other players try to do everything they can to avoid renewable energy where I think as a as a human being on this planet we just need to be more cautious with our resources we should embrace all opportunities that we have Absolutely. so you do a, uh, a lot of flat roof warehouses I mean to me I've looked across California and, and America at these mm -hmm. huge buildings whether mm -hmm. they're distribution warehouses or the Walmarts and the Targets and etc. And for years they weren't viable because of you know the weight of the mm -hmm. products. But now it seems to be that, that that's becoming less of an issue. And now those kind of buildings can put solar on them, correct, and, and drive their energy usage, you know, their traditional energy usage down. Correct. It, I think it's 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 a sign of the market maturing. You know, uh, several years ago, solar didn't exist and wasn't part of the building code. You know, they had to uh, either go to components and cladding or structures like billboards to refer to what a solar array would do. Well, both are incorrect. And I think as we learn more and as there are companies like ourselves that do actual wind tunnel testing instead of simulation or calculations, there's a lot more knowledge out there. And, you know, what we learned with our system is we can take a lot of ballast out where it's not necessary compared to the traditional methods. Uh, but we also learned that there are areas on the roof, specifically sort of the north corners, um, where you have these wind vortexes that create a lot of uplift um, that you need to account for. And method one in AC7 does not. Method three is the actual wind tunnel testing it does. So, you know, it is more accurate and it's becoming more sophisticated to address that. And what we see in our system, uh, in most cases, we can be less than five pounds a square foot on average, sometimes even as low as less than two. Um, but we can allocate weight and strength where it's needed and avoid it where it's not needed. Good. It's 
which, which makes a lot more projects feasible. Yeah, because yeah. Of that. yeah. That's an important part of yeah. the equation, then I would imagine. Yeah. Because some some buildings are built, you know, di different large scale warehouses mm -hmm. or buildings are built to different engineering over the Correct. years. Correct. You know, and maybe the more modern ones could take a little better load bearing. Yeah. Or all, all the and all the buildings. So, I mean, we've run into some scenarios where. Uh, we were the new product like we launched last year and they had considered other products before but they all would require heavy building reinforcements, a uh, significant amount of money um, and with our product they could avoid that whole expense altogether. What, uh, it would seem that your product, if, if uh, technology and development moves along towards the lighter weight panels, the flat mm -hmm. panel, the thin film, that, that, that actually plays into working with your product. Correct. Yeah, it makes the whole system non-conductive. And light. And light. Yeah, yeah. Which We've, our, you know, each each of our products is about less, slightly less than twenty pounds, um, and it's spread over a, a high contact surface. So your 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 true point load gets spread out of um, over four square foot of contact surface per unit. So instead of having to translate everything to rails and then fasteners, where it has to translate down into the beam structure or the column structure of a building. We can avoid it with our system.